Hi, my name is Kathy Copian, and I'm the Executive Discipleship Director at Community of Hope. This week, in our Real Questions series, we're asking, why should I trust the New Testament? No credible historian doubts that a person named Jesus lived 2,000 years ago. Even our calendars are based on it. But can we trust what the New Testament says about him? Let's approach the New Testament not as God's word for now, but the way you would approach any ancient historical document, applying the test historians use to see if it's authentic. The first test is, was it written by eyewitnesses? And do we have more than one? Well, we have four biographies of Jesus' life. Matthew and John were both eyewitnesses. Mark was writing for Peter, also an eyewitness. Luke wasn't an eyewitness, but he describes how he carefully investigated everything and interviewed eyewitnesses. So we're good on that test. The second test, does it include irrelevant detail? That might sound strange, but a true account of someone telling what they actually remember will include some details that just don't matter. That's how our memories work, and that's exactly what you find in the Gospels. Test number three. If they include information that could be embarrassing to the writers, that's a sign of authenticity. There's lots of that in the New Testament. Jesus' disciples argued about who was the greatest, deserted Jesus when he got arrested, and Peter even denied knowing Jesus. No one would have stuck that in there if they were making this up. The fourth test, are the accounts relatively consistent on big points, but not 100% alike? Why is it good for them not to be identical? because that's a sign that the witnesses work together to make up a story. The tiny variations in the four Gospels are actually good, and the fact that all of them agree on major events, like seeing Jesus alive after he died, adds to their reliability. Test 5. Was it written close enough to the events that some eyewitnesses would still be alive and legend didn't have time to develop? We know the Jewish temple in Jerusalem was destroyed in 70 A.D., And that's not mentioned in the Gospels. With Jesus dying around 30 AD, we can be pretty confident the Gospels were written within less than 40 years of that, which is considered too short for legend to have developed. The next test, with Jesus doing amazing miracles and even rising from the dead, you'd expect other writers outside the Bible to have mentioned him. One or two would be considered great by historians, but we have at least five other ancient sources outside the Bible that confirm many details about Jesus, even mentioning his crucifixion, and that people say he appeared to them alive after he died. What about the earthquake and darkness that happened when Jesus died? That should come up somewhere outside the Bible too. Sure enough, Phlegon, a Greek author describing the Olympics of 33 AD, mentions a solar eclipse and an earthquake right around the time Jesus died. And the earthquake has also been substantiated by geological studies of the soil layers. And then there's the archaeology test. There's lots of archaeological evidence for the New Testament, but some of the most exciting pieces are boxes with names on them that were used to hold the bones of dead people, called ossuaries. We have found ossuaries with the names of several people mentioned in the Bible, including one with the inscription, James, son of Joseph, brother of Jesus. Isn't that amazing? And more archaeological evidence is being discovered all the time. Historians also ask whether the writer of an ancient document might have had a motive to make up what they wrote. Far from gaining anything, all the New Testament authors suffered horrible persecution and most were killed, so there was no motive to make up stories. Finally, since everything had to be copied by hand, you might wonder if we still have the same content that was originally written by Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Paul after all these years of copying. Well, we have over 5,600 manuscripts of the New Testament. The more manuscripts you have, the more you can cross-check them to determine what the original documents actually said. Other ancient writings that are considered reliable have much less than that. There's not even a close second to the New Testament. Well, that's just a taste of the evidence, but I hope you can see that, judging by the normal tests historians use, the New Testament is a reliable historical document. Thanks for listening, and if you found this video helpful, share it with a friend, Subscribe to Community of Hope's YouTube channel or visit our website.